What's this? Shit, I get, I get three of these things every week. This one's from Oswald. Oswald left this for you 10 days ago. You've been talking to my wife, Marina, without my permission, and I don't like you. You need to stop talking to her or any other member of my family, or there will be a price to pay. I got if you do not leave my family. of these things. It says that he's going to blow up the office. Three times a week, I get shit like that. But this that. was written by the assassin of the president, and it was delivered to this office in person 10 days ago, Jim, which means we had the assassin of the president in our office oh, no. threatening a federal uh, officer, ago, which is a crime for which he could be president. arrested. We had another ten days ago. delusional nobody. Yeah, well, he's a somebody now. You never said one word about killing the president. No, only you. Well, if I'm going to worry about every son of a bitch who thinks he wants to shoot me, listen, I'm in the wrong goddamn the business. The world is Why not going to care about you. They're going to say that we had him. We had him. And we could have stopped him. The Lowbirds, that's our word, brought to you by people who don't fucking pay attention to what the hell they're doing. <laughs> uh, all rights, no rights reserved, but all mites reserved. I'm still going to get used to that part of the intro now that we're <laughs> Creative Commons. And I'm here with Jeremy Flatlever, uh, a joke that I, that I did not pick up on. <laughs> we did the show. <laughs> Sorry, 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 David. Uh, how are you doing, Max? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm just wonderful, Jim. How are you? <laughs> Fucking miserable. And I hear you're the same for... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess for we're, different reasons. We were both in an accident today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> just one... Just uh, I guess I'm equivocating, though, <laughs> in order to get that joke working. Uh, I'll let you explain your 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 accident. <laughs> your ex oh, I guess you're gonna start with. Yeah, we'll start. We're gonna start with mine, sure. Yeah. Yeah, let's start with yours, because 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 right. <laughs> you you made the you made the uh, you had an accident, and the accident involved you going into a bank and thinking it was a good idea to open an account at a bank. <laughs> Well, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, it's even worse than that, though. It was, it's not even a bank; it's a credit union, which I'm supposed oh. to be better. It's supposed to be better, but no. That's what still... I was gonna. That's what I was gonna make fun of you about. <laughs> because like, why didn't you go to credit union? You said bank. No. Oh, I, I just, I use the term ubiquitously, okay. but yes, no, I, I do belong to a credit union, but yeah, I. <laughs> It, it, it's, it all surrounds me trying to get the fuck out of this state, which <laughs> just everything in my life is all about that right now. And every problem I run into ends up being something to do with that. So get it, getting I, out, running yeah. into, yeah, I'm so all those type of things. Triggered, <laughs> Triggered right now. So, so I, I call, I, I actually didn't even, I didn't even go into the building. I called because my real estate attorney, told me that he needed a bunch of things for me because my house is currently uh, up for sale and we have somebody that we're just about to enter into contract with. So that's one thing to knock off my list of getting the hell out of here. But my lawyer, my lawyer sends me this email and says, I need three or four or five different uh, pieces of uh, information from you, different, uh, you know, copies of different things or whatever, so I can write the contract up. So I say, okay, great. I'll go get everything for you. And one thing he needs is a mortgage statement. <laughs> I don't have one of these because my bank doesn't, they're supposed to send me one every year, but sometimes they manage to forget. I never got one this year. So I don't think anything of it. I'm like, I'll call up the credit union and just, I need to get one of these things. So I call up and, and right away I have a problem because they try to, uh, they try to verify who I am. <laughs> and they, they go through the verification questions and they reach the one about the, the email. And I'm like, honestly, I, I have no idea what email address you guys have on file for me. I'm like, is that really important? Because you already have other information that's obviously much more sensitive oh, that I've given geez. you. And then they go, but well, if we can't, if you don't have that email, I'm like, wait a minute. You're you're trying to and they and they and the woman kept saying, but I'm doing this for your security. I'm like, so you're acknowledging that it's me, <laughs> but <laughs> you're still not going to let me in because I can't give you this one piece of information. I'm like, you do realize that every other question you asked me, from like you know my mother's maiden name, uh, some other stupid question. I'm like, these are all things that are easily ascertained about me in about a five or ten minute search for any halfway decent per halfway decent hacker. You do realize that anybody could give you this information, right? And she admits, yes, but it's just policy, sir, and I'm just following policy. 
<laughs> Email so, is the easiest uh, thing to find out about you. <laughs> exactly. So after getting agitated with her, finally I just said, listen, we're not getting anywhere. <laughs> put, I want to speak to your supervisor. So, you know, just put me up the line. I don't, I'm not going to deal with you. Let's just go. So puts me up to the next person in line. I get the same runaround from this woman. <laughs> And she actually she actually utters the phrase multiple times at me, sir, I'm just doing my job. Now, me being me, hearing that phrase normally, it doesn't sit well with me. But when I'm already agitated, now I'm like, oh, you did not just say that. I'm like, I'm like did you really just, and I actually said this, I, I started to lose my patience at this point. I'm like, did you really just throw the fucking failed Nuremberg defense at me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> And, she, and that got her all sorts of confused because cl clearly she had no idea what the Nuremberg tribes were. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so again, I, I after dealing with her for about a minute or two, I'm like, I put me up the line. Next, please give me your give me your manager because I'm not dealing with you. I can't deal with stupid today. I'm sorry. Anyway, to, to shorten this up a little bit, I end up two more two more people up the line. Now I'm on the fourth person I'm talking to. This woman has already heard everything that's gone on between me and the other three as I've screamed at every one of them and just said, just give me your fucking manager because you're an idiot and I cannot deal with this type of idiocy. She doesn't want to ask me any of these questions, but she tries to tell me that she can't give me the information without the email. And finally, I'm just like, listen, I'm not going through this again. I've already proven to three of your subordinates that your verification process is absolute garbage and anybody could call up and say that they were me and you would happily give them my information. So we've already established you're not protecting anybody's security and, and, and privacy here. I have an email address that I do use that I would like you to send this to. And then she goes, would you like me to change the email address on file? Oh, I'm like, you've got to be kidding. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. That's all I had to do from the first, like, so at this point, I just... I'm like, I just need this fucking paper sent to my house. That's all I, I'm like, you are literally holding up the sale of my house at this point. You need, I'm like, just send me the goddamn thing. Fine, sir. What's the email? I'm like, wait a minute. So now you're going to take the email that the, uh, the other three told me they couldn't take and now you're going to send me it? Okay, whatever. I gave her the email. I'm like, she's, and then she tries to, you know, follow up with her courtesy stuff and well, have a nice day. And I'm like, I don't even care. Just send me the goddamn thing and I hang up the phone. I don't think about it. I go to work. Three hours later, I'm on my way home, and it's nearing 5 o'clock, and all of a sudden, my phone rings, and it's the bank, or the, the credit union, and I'm like, I am not answering this. I'm like, because <laughs> something bad is going to happen here. And an email pops up shortly thereafter, and I'm like, it's got to be them. That just way, way too weird of a coincidence. And I look, and sure enough, it's it's this woman from the, from the credit union saying... Uh, about that paper I was supposed to send you, there's a problem, and I need you to contact me. Uh. So, of course, like I said, three or four hours go by before she finally reaches out, and she waits till the end of the business day. So when I call her back, she starts telling me that because my mother's name is also on this, this piece of paper, because we, we, we're both on the deed to the house, and, and so we're both on the, on, the, on the mortgage paperwork, because her name's on there and because her social security number's on there, she can't send it to me without, without like marking it all up and doing all these things. And I'm like, I'm like, ma'am. If you do that, I can almost guarantee you that my lawyer is going to tell me that he needs another copy because this is part of a legal document. <laughs> and as much as I hate the goddamn law and the stupidity that surrounds it, I am not going to have to do this twice. And we're talking about my mother. It's not like we're talking about some stranger that you're handing me their social security number. I'm like, it's my fucking mother. I'm like, clearly we know each other's social security numbers because we had to fill out paperwork sitting next to each other to buy this goddamn place 10 years ago. She just, she flat out refuses to give me this thing. And I just like, I, I, I completely lost it. And like I know these things are being recorded, so I try to be as careful as I can, but I'm cursing up a storm. <laughs> and finally, I'm just like, I'm like, listen, I'm like, if you manage to hold up the sale of my house and keep me stuck in this shithole of a state any longer than I have to be at this point, I'm like, I am going to come find you and hold you personally responsible for this shit. <laughs> Wow, you she said they were gonna go. You said you were gonna go find her, and there's a threat. Yes. So yes, is yes. that what? Oh God! <laughs> yes, <laughs> I knew it. So because of this, uh, she tells me that she's now gonna hand me over to the fraud department of the, of the credit oh, union, God. and I'm like, I'm not dealing with this. So I just hang up the phone and I call my real estate lawyer and I explain what happens. He's like, I'll call them. I will deal with it. Don't worry <laughs> about it. So again. 
I go to bed, don't really, you know, I'm a little pissed off, but I don't really think about it. I, I, I do my recording last night. <laughs> Today, right about 4.30, again, right before the end of the business day, I receive a phone call from the credit union. It's the fraud department. <laughs> They're calling me to inform me that because of the threat that I made to multiple employees, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm like, can we play the tape back here? Because I'm like, let's listen to it right now. I'm like, because I know for a fact I made a threat towards one of them, and it wasn't a threat of any physical violence. I just said I was going to hold her responsible for the for failing for me failing to sell my house and getting the hell out of this horrible state. And he said he didn't care. They had decided that they were locking down my accounts. And they were then going to start the process of closing all of my accounts. I was not allowed to go anywhere near any of their branches. (laughs) Because if I did, they were going to call the cops on me if I stepped foot in anywhere. And I said, well, wait a minute. I just deposited money yesterday because I had a bill due today that gets pulled out of that account. There's There's a couple hundred bucks in there right now. That's the only money I have. You're telling me that you're not going to let me access my money, that you are stealing my money from me. I'm not stealing your money, sir, but I can't have it. No. So how is this not stealing? Wait a minute. (laughs) So, yeah, and basically he doesn't want to hear anything. You know, he's just, this is, this is how it's going to be. And then he first, he tells me that I could still, that I could still do, I can still do banking online. And I'm like, wait a minute, how can I do banking online? You just told me that you locked my accounts. That went over his head too, and uh, he ended up hanging up on me because he didn't want to be. He 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 didn't want. He's dealt. Uh, I believe the word the phrase he used was, "I I know I know how people like you are. I've dealt with people like you. I'm not putting up with this." And he hangs up the phone on me. And when I tried calling back again, they actually patched me directly through to him, even though I didn't ask them to. <laughs> It just ended up getting patched through to him. And he's like, he's like, don't call me anymore. He's like, you can only contact me through email. If you call me again, I'm going to, I'm going to report this to the detective that's already on this case. And you're going to be, you're going to be, uh, have a harassment charge tacked on top of you. I'm like, you're stealing my fucking money. What are you talking about? <laughs> and then he hung up on me again. So yeah, they locked me out of all of my accounts. Uh, including they said they all, he told me that everything was getting locked down, including my credit card, which is through them as well. And that was the biggest problem for me. Cause yeah, the couple hundred bucks, it was a pain in the butt. Cause that's literally the only cash I had. I deposited everything I had yesterday to make sure this one bill was paid. And my, cause it was my car payment. I'm like, I got to make sure that's paid. <laughs> um, you know, I, the couple hundred bucks is one thing, but the, I've been living off of credit for the past couple of months waiting for the sale of my house. Without that credit card, I literally have nothing (laughs) because the little bit of money that I'm bringing in from doing work part time is immediately going out to different bills and stuff like that that have to be paid. And uh, (laughs) so, yeah, I I was like, you've got like, I was just, I was completely at a loss. I was like, what the fuck am I going to do? I literally have no money. I'm like, my kids got to (laughs) eat. You know, I got like, I need to pay the electricity while I'm still living here and the heat bill and all this crap. And uh, yeah, man, I was like, I freaking lost it. <laughs> yeah, I'd lose so, it too. I mean, I mean, th- there's been times where like my credit card had cracked, had, had a crack in it where the chip is. Mm-hmm. And I had to wait for, you know, for them to send me out a new card, which can take anywhere Seven from like, a business week. days. Yeah. And it's just like, oh God, you, you, it's like you can't touch your money, or you have you have to figure out certain like ways of like getting around that. And it's it, it's always been a pain in the ass. Well, I can't yeah. remember how I was getting around it last time, but it was. Mm. Well, that, yeah. oh no, like I was using the um, uh, I was using the, the smartphone, the Android Pay. I figured out I could uh, use that because <laughs> it was still attached to my account. So I was using the Android Pay. And then, like, just asking for cash on it, and then it was a pain in the ass dealing with that. Um, and then when I got a credit card, it made things a little bit better because then I was like, okay, I'll just use a credit card and then immediately pay off <laughs> what I'm using. Like every time I say, like, oh, there's a charge for, you know, three dollars and fifty cents, I'll put three dollars and fifty cents in there now, and it's, it's still that's yeah. a pain in the ass. Well, yeah, it's it's all, well, yeah, because immediately a couple of my friends were like, "What well, can we do?" First, first response was, "Well, let's just use, you can just use PayPal for now." I'm like, "No, I can't. No, it was yeah. attached to my it was attached to my bank account." Yeah. I'm like, "I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah. If you want to send me money, you can. I can't do anything with it just yet. Jeez, it'll just sit there." So 
I mean, luckily, I mean, this all happened earlier, and I was freaking the fuck out. Luckily, they must have missed something because my credit card is still functional. I found this out because I decided to go to stop at a gas station and just check because I was running low on gas anyway. And I'm like, screw it. I might as well try. And I was able to buy gas. And I'm like, well, all right. That's that's one if, way of locking down the account, making if it they work. haven't, Yeah, if they haven't locked it down yet, then I'm like, it might happen like tomorrow or something. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm like, I'm just going to max it out now. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> so I went out, you know, I went out and bought a bunch of stuff that I had to buy. I came home and paid a couple of bills that I had to pay on on it. And I'm like... Because because now I can't even pay it anyway, because I can sign into my bank. I can sign in online to to the to the credit union, and I can look at everything. But they've locked down to my account, so I can't transfer anything. So even if I wanted to pay them, I can't. So I'm like, well, all right, then I'm just not going to pay you. <laughs> Because it, the only thing they can really do, I mean, they'll send collections after me eventually, but it, all, and all that will do is harm my credit, which I don't give a flying fuck about anyway. I gave up caring about that three years ago when I took my business to cash only because I had excellent credit at that point, but I came to the decision that I just don't care anymore. I'm not going, I'm not doing this route anymore. So credit is kind of meaningless to me is for, in that regard. So I'll just let it go to shit. <laughs> so now by trying to screw me, what they are going to essentially do is screw themselves out of at least 30 grand, the way I figure it, um, between the credit card. And then, and then I also can't pay, I also can't pay the overdraft on my checking account, oh, <laughs> which is, almost maxed out because i can't access anything so and they've and they're, and they're closing my accounts i'm like well if you close everything then i don't have to pay you back anymore because you've closed the accounts out and i can no longer do anything about them so you've just fucked yourself out of 30 grand dumbass jeez <sighs> but yeah that sounds like what? a terrible bank <laughs> credit unions can be a mixed bag like i've had bad ex I wouldn't say like terrible experiences with credit unions. I've had some pretty bad ones. Like there's one here in Vegas. And I'll, and I'll say it because I don't have an account there anymore. It was in touch. And like the, 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 it was just it was just a pain in the ass because they had the system where, yeah, it's free checking and free everything. But you have to use their bill pay at least once a month. Otherwise, they'll charge you eight bucks. And their bill pay system is like horrible it, it's like the worst thing ever it looked like it was developed in like, like 95 or maybe like early 2000s and they haven't updated it since and it's like it's wonky and it doesn't even work sometimes and i was like well screw this and they kept like charging balances on it and then like then they charged like another month on top of it after i closed my account and then i called them and i was like but i closed my account and they were like oh well then you don't oh. then you don't owe us anything what about the oh, gee, thanks. And it was like, so I don't even know you from the previous month either. <laughs> okay, whatever. Sounds good to me. <laughs> and, yeah. and and now now I can't even cash my check there, even though I'm part of a member bank in another credit union, which is good, which isn't even in Vegas. And they started turning all their tellers into like ATMs with. Mm -hmm. like it's it, it's an atm but it's got a video screen where you talk to an actual teller and it's like <laughs> well screw yeah this. that's I'm, i hate those things yeah see we have we have that here half well my credit union there's a bunch of them around here half of them have that set up <laughs> i usually try to avoid those ones yeah those are a nightmare so i found another one and they're pretty good but it's, it's still a member bank and i'm not a part of that, that so you know, and they give me two dollar bills when I ask for it, so I'm cool. <laughs> oh well, that's. That. Well, I actually had like this credit union up until this point. This was just like a, a, a total nightmare of you know, and and again, I'm fully aware of what I said to this woman, but I also know that it doesn't constitute an actual threat of physical violence. Yeah. So the fact that because like because I you know I I I know full well that they record this stuff, so I'm always very careful with these things. And yes, do I like to push limits? Absolutely, that's me. But I mean, like I said, at that point, I had already been on the phone for an hour when that happened because I had to wait on hold for 20 minute, 20 plus minutes just to get to the first idiot. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, that was, that was my, that was my wonderful day. Well, a couple of days now. So like I said, at least it's a little better now. And the way I look at it, they've, uh, you know, the, the only, the only problem they could still give me is try to find some way to hold up the sale of my house 
And the only, I think the only way they could actually do that is if they could manage to somehow jumpstart foreclosure proceedings because now I can't make payments. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm sure if you if you took that to court and be like, they won't take my money. Yeah, I'm I'm not allowed to give them money. <laughs> and then now they're gonna foreclose on my account because they won't give. Hello, that's not that's not exactly. how this works, guys. You can't you can't just say like I don't want your money. By the way, you didn't pay me money. No, <laughs> pick yeah. one. You either want my money or I didn't give it to you. <laughs> exactly. You can't be both. So. I'm just, you know, I'm just going to try to put it to the side for now and just deal with the fact Jeez. that ho hopefully the contract for my house will be signed on Monday. It would, it would have been signed today if the uh, potential buyers didn't have to run out of town at the last minute. Um, but hopefully it'll be signed on Monday and I, I can at least check that thing off. Um, you know, still got the court case to deal with, but hell, as long as I can sell the house and get out of this crap, I, I don't care anymore. Cause then I'll be, t I'll be done with the bank altogether anyway. Cause that's the other, that's the other thing. I'm like, you guys are trying to kick me out. I have a mortgage through you. <laughs> you know, yeah. you can't get rid of me that easily. So I've been dealing with, uh, I wouldn't say stupid people, just people who don't pay attention. <laughs> So I've been I've been driving for 14 years with my own car. I've been driving for 14 years. Uh, and not only have I been just driving for 14 years like on the road, I've had many jobs where that required me to drive around as part mm -hmm. of the job, carpet cleaning, uh even even being a driver for a a machine shop. You know, even one of those giant trucks, well not even a giant. It's not even a it's not like a like a diesel truck or anything. It's just a big truck with a big flatbed on it. Uh, I've driven those, th and it was that was a piece of shit. But <laughs> I've driven like those things around. I've driven like commercial vans around. Uh, I've mm. done multiple multiple cross country trips to like all over the place, like all over the place. I probably have millions mi in probably in the million uh, miles on the road over the fourteen years. Haven't even got so much as a speeding ticket. I've been like pulled over once, but it was for like because I crossed a, a double white line uh, on a freeway for the express lane once, and he pretty How much was like it, the cop was pretty much like I just wanted to make sure you guys weren't drinking. You guys are cool. You can go, but we were drinking, but <laughs> <laughs> we just we just weren't drunk. Um, that's about it. Like I got a parking ticket once, but it was pretty much like I knew I was going to get one. It was just like as my friend's dog was not doing well and I had to park outside of a vet in L.A. And they, they tagged me quick. Like it, I thought I was going to get out of there fine after it was all said and done. But nope, there was a ticket on my wind sh windshield. So and I was like, well, you told me to do it. So you're paying it. And he was like, cool. So, I mean, I, I, I like my my driving record was spotless. Never been in an accident. I haven't even been into the car while someone else was having an accident or anything. I've seen accidents happen, um, but I've never actually been involved in one. How you can tell somebody's not from New York. <laughs> <laughs> but today I had my first, and oh. it wasn't my fault. Uh, and I'm okay, don't worry. Uh, my back's a little bit sore, but it's it's doing okay now. Like, I don't, it's just not, it's not even like in, it's just barely kind of reaching kind of like uncomfortable, not even pain. It's just more like it, it. It was it was it was a lot worse earlier, but even still, it wasn't bad. It was just kind of like, yeah, I've 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 messed up my back doing dumb things, you know, and you know it's been fine the next day, and it that was far worse than what I have right now. I should be all right. Um, kind of banged my 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 shin a little bit, uh, and I think the steering wheel may have hit my chest and I just didn't realize it because now now I'm feeling it's it's a little sore. Not bad, but it's a little sore. I'm just kind of taking a precautionary night off just to make sure that I don't do any heavy lifting for at least a day just to let myself recuperate, just to make sure everything's fine. I'm okay. Uh, the, the girl that, that uh, made me hit her, she <laughs> came out of that thing completely unscathed, uh, but more damage was done to her car. I just, you know, I, I was... I hit collision straight on, but donk, and she she kind of like got hit from the side, mm -hmm. uh, but I I hit her front end, <laughs> so uh, yeah she pulled out uh, out of a out of a residential street with a stop sign, and I was kind of like going through a straight 
kind of thoroughfare kind of thing. Um, I just passed a light. There was no stop light. In the, there was no in, real intersection, so to speak. And she just darted out, and I was in the inside lane, and I kind of saw her coming out, and I started, like, hitting my brakes and honking my horn at the time because I already knew that, you know, that, and I figured that would get her to stop. And she did not stop. She thought it was a better idea to speed up. So... <laughs> But that didn't matter because I had already started kind of like swerving into the, you know, the passing lane, <laughs> uh-huh. thinking like she'll stop. No, she sped up and then I, I, I dinged her and um, her, she couldn't drive the car home. I could, but it was making all kinds of noises. Uh, the cop said that it was, it sounds like your radiator is pinned up against the, the engine. And I was like, okay, as long, as long, it sounds like I could still probably get it home. <laughs> it wasn't that far away from my house. Uh, and I was like, I could probably still get it home, um, which I did. Uh, and then they came and towed it. And um, it's been dealing with, with insurance companies. But my insurance company, turns out it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. They're pretty good. I'm not going to mention them by name because I, I don't want people fucking trying to ha- hack it and get free <laughs> stuff out of it. Um, so I got a rental car now. It's a a Ford escape and it's pretty nice. It's got Bluetooth so I can do all that thing. But yeah, never been in an accident before. And, I, and we were, you were like, you've never been in an accident before. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm not from New York. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Cause to me, that just seems so odd. I've been, I can't even, I, I'd have to really reach back and think about all the ones I've been in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so but well, well. You know, at least you're okay. Yeah, at, yeah, le- at least yeah. you're okay. Car, but, I guess. Your, your car, your, yeah. How mm-hmm. how is the car? Not so good. Yeah, I thought that it was. It would, you know, that they could probably, you know, pull it, pull, you know, pull some things back. And I was like, you know, there's still there's still a bit of like damage to it. You know, it was still good enough to drive home. It just even making a bunch of noise. And I was like, it's possible they could fix it. And then. Um, they came and towed it. I had to deal with some just minor issues with, with my insurance company. They had the wrong phone number on file. And so mm-hmm. they kept like sending me updates to a phone that I don't own. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, guys, come on, please fix it. And the rent car people were like, they were late on top of the fact that they were trying to contact me through a phone that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently they got a hold of someone. They were like, yeah, we talked to your grandson. <laughs> I'm 35. Oh, I don't even have a kid, let alone a kid with a kid. And they were like, oh, wait, what's what's the phone number? And they're like, oh, we had some other phone number on file. Oh. And I was like, keep messing everything up. But uh, that after, after that little minor quit, like it wasn't nearly as bad as your experiences. I didn't end up having to like th- threaten them vaguely <laughs> or anything. But <laughs> which should have that would have been fun. Well, that's always positive. Yeah. <laughs> But it was just like, come on, man, let's just. Stupid. And they were like, stupid we're... stuff. Yeah, it, it was it was the rent a car company doing it, and they were like, oh, we're so sorry, we messed up. And I was like, no, that's that's my insurance company. <laughs> they, they wouldn't update my file, even though I told them like three times, fix my phone number. Um, got that all worked out, and then uh, then I went to the the auto place and. And they were like, yeah, they were like, I'm going to be completely honest with you. After they have signed all the paperwork and everything, like, we're just going to try to see if we can get the car in working condition first by pulling back the radiator. Uh, but I don't think you're, this is going <laughs> to, this is going to work, buddy. I'm just letting you uh... out front. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm still, I have really good insurance. Uh, and I was like, okay, so that probably means they're going to replace my car. Ye old and her, total. And she, it turned out like it, they ended up getting my insurance company got a hold of, of her because they were they couldn't have it. They were having trouble getting a hold of her insurance, her insurance, her insurance company because her insurance company was one of those kind of like cheap insurance companies, you know, local <laughs> cheap insurance yeah, set, companies set, set up in a strip mall somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> just, po- just popped up one there one morning. It's like, hey, I don't remember this here yesterday. Where did these guys come from? That type of place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know them well. <laughs> Yeah, and they also it's also it's like it's like so and so insurance and shoe shoemaker you know, like from the Simpsons like <laughs> with the lawyer he's like I found yeah. this orange Julius and he wanted it <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those places 
but they they ended up contacting her and get a hold of her and talk to her and she was like, yeah, it was my fault and I'm gonna file a policy and so I guess it's gonna be taken care of. I still got to pay a pretty heavy deductible if they fix my car or replace my car, um, but they're gonna pay it back, so I'm good. I am missing a day of work, so that's about it. Uh, but I think I'll be all right. Well, if that ends up being the extent of it, yeah, I guess yeah. one day of work is... And I'm going to hear the end of it. I'm, I'm not going to hear the end of it, rather, um, because I'm the one that has the co uh, the company coffee maker right now, and I'm not showing up to work. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so they're going to go... They're gonna, there's a coffee machine there, but it's like one of those coffee machines that dispenses, like, what's it, uh, the, the concentrated coffee, and it's uh, disgusting. Yeah. And so they're gonna yeah. all gonna have to drink that tonight, because I have. Oh. It's like, but come on, it's an automatic drip coffee machine that I have. You, you, it's not great coffee there either. It's not like I have a like, like I have the French press and the coffee bean grounder and the the, the you know the, the <laughs> beans from the local like coffee bean company here. Like no, this yeah. is, I have Folgers and an automatic drip. <laughs> Give me a break. So Folgers. Who the hell drinks that crap? <laughs> People don't know better. <laughs> yeah, but, you true. know, if you need caffeine. No, oh, I know. It works. I've, beca I've, I've become a true. coffee. I've be I, I, I was saying earlier, I was, I was telling you about my wonderful coffee seltzer water that I think is freaking amazing. Um, but I I never, you know, I, I, coffee. I was, I was never. Yeah. So I'm not, not. That's why I'm not mentioning the name, but it's great. Uh, maybe I'll send a picture later. They, whatchamacallit. Um. Yeah, was, coffee was never like the taste of it was never really my thing. I just used it for the caffeine. But as I've gotten older, I've learned to appreciate it. And I became a bit of a snob when I was able to get like, you know, really high quality stuff at the local box store, the BJ's um, for cheap. And I was like, now I don't want to drink the rest of the uh, drink the rest of the swill out there. Uh, although although 7-Eleven has good coffee. So if I don't make it at home, I get that stuff. But mm. yeah, anyway, Starbucks is a complete waste of money. Oh, on yeah. every level no. i the only time i ever really went to starbucks is a lot of my clients used to get me gift cards yeah, what is with like that like, why do people give you those i i don't well see my clients thinking was i i know a lot of them did i mean some of them were smarter and gave me uh, dunkin donuts which i definitely if i'm gonna go to either yeah. either one of those places yeah. i definitely prefer D, D over starbucks um always have always will uh but there i know a lot of their thinking was they were giving it to me for christmas it was in the winter it was cold i could use it because they also knew that i drank coffee i don't think they really paid attention to the fact that i either brought my own or had a 7-eleven cup but they just knew that I drank stuff like that in the winter. So like, oh, we can get, you know, along with whatever little gift we give you, if we give you some money, we'll give you this. And then you can go, you know, buy yourself some drinks. And <laughs> yeah. Um, although, of course, you know, a $25 Starbucks gift card gets you like four drinks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even even the if 20... you just get coffee black, it's, it's like four bucks. Here, it's, it's like at least bucks. four bucks. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. four bucks where I am, too. Oh, for oh, black right, coffee. Give pretty... me a break. I know. Exactly. And it's not even that good. It's no. bitter as hell. Yeah. I'll take my Peruvian stuff that I get. And I like I like bitter dark roasts too. But even still I remember I was like something's off with this thing last time I got coffee. Like I think I I think I got like a free free coffee it was something to do with my membership at, at a casino and where I cashed my check and they said I think I, I th yeah I think it was because I cashed my check and they and I won like a free coffee or something like that. I think that's what it was. And then mm. I go and get it and I was like I would not pay four bucks for this thing because I was like waiting for them to, to pour it and I was looking up and I was like it's four bucks for one of these yeah oh because I, I I'm not one of those people that want like a like a, a, a what is it like a frappe latte yeah soy milk whatever yeah I'm, and I'm not I'm not one of those people I'm definitely not the frappuccino type um I, I do like those every once in a while. I do I, I like have to the, say they're tasty. Caramel macchiatos are okay. Yes, that's the one. I, that's actually the one I usually drink. That's, yeah. That is that is the one thing I did used to like at Starbucks was their caramel macchiatos. But again, usually only when I had gift cards. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've had because the, the small of that's like five bucks. But I've had it at Dunkin' Donuts and I like it better at Dunkin'. Donuts. Oh <laughs> so. well, please they. 
what should we call it? At seven at seven eleven, seven eleven always has the international delight creamers for their coffees. They made a they made a caramel macchiato one. You put a splash of that in the coffee, it tastes just like it. I'm like, okay, I can get a two dollar coffee at seven eleven. That's go. twice as twice as big as the seven dollar one at, at Starbucks. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I've got I've, I've become a coffee snob myself, but it's like I have the French press, I have the the coffee bean grinder. There's a um, there's actually a, I have not gone that far. Oh, you, you're missing. I have out. a grinder. I I do actually own a coffee bean grinder, except I've never used it to grind coffee beans. Oh, I use it mostly for I I, I make um, almond meal. Because I make I, I make fresh almond milk for my kids, and then I take the leftover almond stuff from the milk, and I grind it up into almond flour, and uh, you, you know use it to bake and you know, cook and what, whatever with it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't remember where I was going with that now. Damn it, coffee. You're not that coffee. much for coffee. Oh yeah, I've, yeah. So I use I use it to grind I use it to grind that up, and I may have also used it to gr- grind up mushrooms. A timer, yeah. ten. <laughs> but never for coffee. Alleged. <laughs> It, they're 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 edible mushrooms. They're, they're just yeah, little dry yeah, portobellos, or... sh- 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 shiitakes. You know, you know. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. shiitakes. Yeah. Mm, portobello. Yeah. I haven't had one of those in a while. I need one of those. Anyway. Yeah. Buttons buttons get a bad rep in the mushroom world, though. It, <laughs> unnecessarily bad rep. Um, but I yeah, think um, I know the yeah. I, I get I, I I grind my own beans. There's um. There's a store here called Winco, and, and if you're from the Midwest, you probably know what what this is. It's 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 almost like they can't decide if they want to be a um, uh, a Costco or uh, a Walmart. So they have like they don't have like a lot of bulk stuff, but they have a lot of stuff in bulk, and it's really cheap sometimes. Or they have like the the bulk container stuff, you know, where you can like pour it into bags and then they weigh it. They have like yeah yeah. Yeah, so it's it's kind of one of those things, but they have a, a a coffee aisle or a little little section where they have coffee beans that are roasted by a company here in Vegas, and they're like artisanal like coffee beans that you can buy, you know, buy you know you pour it in a bag and they weigh it and everything, and it, it, they're they're fucking amazing. <laughs> so I, I get they get mm. whole beans, I grind them up. I have two kinds. I have like an Ethiopian, and I have one called Java Buzz, which is like a really dark, 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 dark roast. Oh, it's amazing. French press, that whole thing. You're missing out, man. You, once you go French press or aerial press or like any one of these kind of things, it's not an automatic drip, man. It's 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 a whole different thing. Percolators. I've I've heard. I've I've had it in the past. I just yeah, I haven't got around to it. Maybe once I move and uh I got all this other BS behind me. <laughs> I will I will try to upgrade my uh my, my coffee making setup because you know. I'm I'm currently happy with my little automatic press, you know. Like I said, I got I got my my organic Peruvian coffee my coffee grounds, and it tastes it tastes it tastes great to me. So I'm like, that's good. Plus, I don't I don't need I don't need it to be that. I mean, I'm not as concerned with the taste as I am at other points because these days I drink mostly bulletproof coffee anyway. Yeah. So I'll admit, I'm telling you, I don't even need to use a blender with bulletproof coffee. <laughs> I could just use the French press. I just, I'll, I'll drain it out. I'll put it in some sort of container, and then I'll rinse mm-hmm. out the the um, the print the press, and then I'll put the, the the coffee back into it. Put like the butter and the I I just use coconut oil. I'm not gonna spend money on yeah, it. Yeah, me too. And then uh, I'll put it in there, yeah. and then I'll just put pull the, the 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 plunger up and down, up and down, and up and down, and it emulsifies it enough. Hmm. All right. Now you you may have sold me on that point right there. <laughs> 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 Cutting out the extra step of the blender, which I don't mind using because I have my little blend tech thing with the, oh, okay. with, the with the with, with the you know with the small with the small um, blender bucket or whatever they call it. You know, I have the, I have the big one for all my food process, and then and it came with a small extra one. I'm like, oh, this is a perfect coffee size. Because yeah, all um, you're basically but if, but doing, if I can skip that step, yeah, yeah, all you're doing is just making an emulsification. Um, yeah, exactly. You don't you don't really need that. You just need a little bit of air and a little bit of, of action. That's it. There you go. Hmm. Just, just let the when you let the plunger hit it the first time, you just let like you know hit it hit kind of hard, so it kind of splashes inside. That just allows enough air to get inside for you to just start plunging it like up and down, up and down, up and down. Yep, and it makes it good. You know, sometimes uh, I'll notice like a little little layer of oil on top, but I'm just like, yeah, whatever, that's fine. Oh, I I don't care. about yeah. that. Yeah, it works, and it, you don't have to hassle with the blender or anything. I have a food processor, not a blender, so 
That's how you do it. And it, it's, that's a great keto thing, too. <laughs> 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 it's a great little keto breakfast is just nothing but fat. <laughs> well, that's that's I, I well I did the same thing for when I when I did paleo was I used to there was plenty of mornings especially on the because uh, I used to do the intermittent fasting and I did it once I only did it once a week but every Monday I would do it and that's all I would do is just drink my drink my fat <laughs> yeah it's delicious. all day you know a couple couple of those and uh, that would get me through an eighteen hour period without eating it was great jeez. What a shitty yeah, day. You, <laughs> I just can't stop thinking about what a man. shitty day I've been having. I know, man. That stuff, I mean, I, I had a bad day, but I, I do think yours is worse, especially because your cherry was popped. I mean, and I, I was going to say it has to happen eventually, but apparently it doesn't to anybody outside, people outside of like New York and L.A. and the horrible traffic areas Yeah, unless you're things a chick, happen regularly. Yeah, unless you're, unless you're a, a, a chick in high school, popping your cherry is usually a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, so. But yeah, so let's talk about Trump and how I was right. <laughs> remember oh, remember what, what, when I kept telling everybody, like, why is why are all these like conservatives and libertarians liking Trump when the guy is still clearly a fucking Democrat and he still believes in a lot of this Democrat shit. And everybody was like, no, he's not. Stop being a cuck. Stop shilling for killery and all this other stuff. And now Trump is talking about getting rid of habeas. But again, talking about it. He's not going to actually do it because he's, he's, he's a pussy and he just talks too much. But um, <laughs> uh, And now he's also talking about like F Feinstein – Getting F Senator Feinstein to, to 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 get one of her gun ban uh, proposals back on the table she's just, again. She's, yeah, that's which, the one which off can't she keeps in her drawer. It's not one. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and even if it did happen, like nobody's going to do it. Like nobody's going to turn well, in their guns. It'll be a civil no. war before that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Well, I just I, talked about that this is yesterday. the line in the sand. I, we always make fun of all the patriot people. Like every time they draw a line in the sand, you know, they go, "Okay, well now cross this one. Okay, now, now cross this one." <laughs> but that is the line in the sand. I think that 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 they were like, "Wait, you want to take the guns? Nah, that's not happening." And I don't even think that cops would even enforce such a thing. They'd be like, "You want me to take their guns?" No, I want to see my family tonight. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> Hell no. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, I it, it, it I actually I I just did it, I did a podcast about I know, this yesterday. That's why I brought it up because it's a good yeah. podcast. <laughs> but it is. It. Oh, thank you. Um, and yeah, it, you're, yeah, yeah. I was I was right about this too. Although I did I did I did say, and I got called on this by a couple people already. They were like, I I loved it except for the part about gloating because I still want to gloat. And I'm like, I I, I should have fleshed that out a little bit more because I do gloat about it too because I was right about a lot of these things. I've been saying it. That's why the one meme I keep throwing out there like over and over and over because it still just makes me laugh. Um, I made right I think right after the election or maybe right before the election was the was the one with Trump with one of his really dumbass faces and you know the one that says Reagan two point doe. And uh, <laughs> I'm like because I'm like I've been telling you I've been trying to warn you motherfuckers nobody wanted most people don't want to listen didn't want to listen to me I'm like I saw the signs it's literally the same thing and the fact that I I'm, I I've also been watching that freaking documentary um well not documentary that that thing Oliver Stone put out a couple of years ago um the history of the United, the untold history of America I like the Bill Wirtz one better well <laughs> I, I, you have you ha you have to get you have to get past you have to get past Stone's horrible like horrible mischaracterizations of capitalism and his obviously obvious like palpable disdain for George W. Bush that he has to make sure he gets picture, his face plastered all over and his name mentioned over and over and over again. Um, but if you get past that, the history is really good. And I've just, re I was reminded of it because I just watched the Reagan years one. You know, like, <laughs> and it's like, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I just say it. it's, I, this, this is why I kept telling people, I'm like, I see the markings. I'll make lifelong Democrat goes to the Republican side because he's, he figures out that's how he can win. Or like the story with Reagan, it was like, a, you know, when he went for governor originally, it was because John Wayne went to him and, you know, hey, Gipper, we need a favor type of deal. Um, but yeah, all the things were there, you know, and, and Trump was even worse because he's always been a blowhard. Ever since I remember him uh, back in the 80s, he's always been a blowhard. Yeah. And he just says stupid things. Um, I mean, and I don't think he believes half of what he fucking says. 
Nope. <laughs> he just, because he just says it, you know, and, and he is, I mean, I to, to his credit, he is a pretty effective troll. <laughs> and he's a brilliant marketer. A yeah. Brilliant marketing machine. Like this guy knows how to, how to get cheap, underpriced attention. Like, and he's good at it. And he, and he hits it hard. And he spends a lot of time thinking about it and acting on it. Like the guy knows what he's doing. You can't say that like he's just just some doofus that everybody just like for some reason likes. Like no, there's a reason why people know about him and listen to him because he knows where to get their attention. That's what he does. Yeah, that's what he's always done. That's that's what really like that's what the real qualifications for president is. It's like who who can get the most amount of attention and, and deliver their story. That's what it is. It has nothing to do with like who's more qualified or who does anything. Because at the end of the day, most people get their information from political TV ads. That's that's who end up voting. Those are the swing voters. They get their information from political ads. That's yeah. it. You know, you get a few people who are really gung ho about one particular candidate who may be knowledgeable about the issues, at least in their own ideology. But for the most part, like most of the people who who make the votes that that swing an election are people who get their information from sound bites and from, you know, just news sources. And that's about it. And where do the news sources get their information? It's usually from when the candidates say something on a platform that gets attention. You know, it's basically how how much how much attention can a, a political candidate hack and and drive a particular narrative effectively. That's what it is. It's all big marketing machine campaign. That's all it is. And Trump, of course, is going to win that campaign over Hillary. Oh yeah, well, just about anybody could have won it over Hillary. Yeah, except yeah. Bernie. Except Bernie, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's true. He really, I mean. He, and he is good at that. I mean, I called him a buffoon in that episode. I still think of him as oh, one. He, but in well, that regard, is. yeah, yeah. In that regard, I, in that regard, I, 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 I don't, I don't disagree with you at all. He definitely is because, yeah, like that's why. I mean, that's one of the reasons I've known who he was since the mid '80s. In the mid '80s, I was only eight years old, but I still remember. Like, of all, I, I barely remember anything before I was twelve, <laughs> but I remember Trump. <laughs> yeah, I remember he was, he was in just, Little Rascals. Like, I remember, yeah. like, oh. Who is that guy? And my, I was asking my parents, and they're like, "Oh, that's a uh, Donald Trump guy. He's a, he's a he's a millionaire, or he's a billionaire. He's like one of the richest people." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I always yeah. knew who he was. I knew who, who he was, and what is that movie? Uh, uh, Lost in New York, uh, uh, Home Alone. There you go. Why can't yes. I remember Home Alone? Fuck that movie. But uh, <laughs> Home Alone too. Wow. Well, I mean, it's it's no happening. So, uh, yeah, it's no happening <laughs> for sure. God, I need to watch that again. Now I don't want to watch that. Again. Can we just pause this and I go? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be back in an hour. And what? Half, so. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that movie. I'm sorry. I still think it's better than The Room. I do. I really wish they would make a disaster artist about, that, <laughs> about the making of that movie because I've seen some of the behind the scenes kind of footage from it and a lot of it's like golden. Like, Mark Goldberg is like always kind of like, why are we knocking on a house for food when there's no grocery stores around and there's no fresh produce? <laughs> like, why are we <laughs> bothering these poor people? <laughs> it's like, come on. I'm perfectly normal. Whole bag waters keep on rolling. It's like perfectly normal. <laughs> it's a brilliant movie. But anyways. Yeah. Aside from, I don't even remember. Where, oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, Trump. I what was this thing that happened? What did he say? I remember he said something well, like, "Well, we can take their guns and then do uh, then do habeas." Well, yeah, apparently then do what due happened. Process. I, I I don't know where it was occurring, but it was it, it was between like him and Pence because there was something Pence. I, I don't know if they were if they were fielding questions or what the deal was, but but Pence said something to the effect of, you know trying to trying to say that you know people you know like this kid um you know obviously you know the ball was dropped or whatever but we still have to you know due process still has to be involved and then we you know and then we take the weapons away from him. and trump shot back really quickly well mike what well, you know why can't we just take the you know take the gun you know take the guns and then deal with the due process 
and everybody flipped out. Uh, well, all the people on the right, of course, <laughs> uh, a lot of them. And my reaction was like, why? Like, no, like you said originally, it's not going to actually happen, number one. Uh, number two, this is Trump just shooting from the freaking hip. I don't like I don't necessarily believe like this was his position the whole time. And this was his part of his master plan to get like some people are thinking it's like, no, man, come on. He just says things. He, he literally has no filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Like I said that so many people like I used to say it about myself. I try to not have a fil I, most of the time I don't have a filter. No, everybody, uh, most everybody has a filter. Even yeah, you do. Yeah. We all do. We, whether we try to whether we admit to it or not, you, there's certain t situations that most people, even even the edgiest of you know trolls or whatever, yeah. will still end up you know uh, raining you know, it back a little bit on some it, things. Exactly, depending on who they're talking to, the situation, whatever. Just it happens. Everybody, does, pretty much everybody, does it. Yeah. Not fucking Trump. <laughs> nope. I've never known the man to do so. Ever. Like I said, he's just. Oh, it's that. It's that New York bravado, man. It just really. Yep. He just. He oozes that that bullshit freaking attitude that I hate so fucking much. Which is the reason I've I've hated that place ever since. Like I even before I lived here, <laughs> I never. I I try to avoid the city like the plague. I always have. It's just like I hate like the, just the whole attitude around it. I'm like, man, no, it's not for me. No, I, I can't stand New York. New Yorkers, and I know I have some New Yorkers that listen, and I always fight with them on Facebook. But I, I genuinely, I'm, I'm one of them. Fuck it. It's yeah, not, they, we suck. We suck well, as a I'm, people. All right, I'm talking about people <laughs> from the people in in the basically the city metropolitan area. I don't know. I guess is it New York City metropolitan area? Is that what they call it? I guess. Yeah. What's the term for it? I'm sure there's some sort of like. Insider I don't know. Like in I don't city. even know. I, I like I said. I really like, people call it so many different things. You yeah. know. So from the city and a lot of New Jersey, like the vast, 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 vast majority of people that come from that area, I cannot stand at well, all. The, the, the people, especially from North Jersey, are complete douchebags. But for so so so, so much different reasons, they're just horrible people. <laughs> like um, horrible individuals. Like every single time I meet one of these people, they're always talking about like, oh, they always talk about quote unquote back home or back there. It's like, like, no, you're here now. Move on. Dip. Move, move on. on. Move on. <laughs> and then they're always complaining about like, oh, yeah, I don't like this place. It's like, get the fuck back. If you don't like it so much, go back. Like if, if, if that place is so great that you can't stop, you can't, one, you can't shut the fuck up about it because that's the, all they talk about. Every time I meet someone from New York City, it's always like, oh, yeah, back when New York City, like I love that place. That place got so much culture. Like everybody's got, no one out here has got any culture. It's like, shut up, Vinny. You haven't seen a show that, that didn't have a giant AMC outside of the front door. Don't pretend like <laughs> you've ever been to a fucking Broadway show in your entire life. Secondly, yes, there's good pizza. Not everybody's trying to make New York pizza. Shut the fuck up. And three, no one gives a shit about your fucking bagels, okay? It's bread. <laughs> it's just bread. Calm down. <laughs> and you're not even enjoying it for the bread. You're enjoying it for the fucking bullshit that you're spreading on top of it, like lox and cream cheese and shit. Like, come on. Stop it. God damn it! I, you don't. You don't now, know how deep. Now, the now, fuck, now, now. Tell me how you really listen, feel. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> listen, man. No, man. Don't be. Don't be attacking the fucking. What, what, what the fuck? The bagels do to you, man? Come on. I love. The, I, it's I love the bagels. Not the bagels. I like bagels. It's, it's no. It's, see, it's, that's it's not true. Arrogance. That's not true. That's not true. At least not for me. The I, bagels that it, good out there. There's a there's a place down in the town that that my family there's a place man back home back there back there back, where my family you know back, back there. there back there back home no it's a couple towns down where my family lives um but that's where that's where you know I spent most of my time until I moved over here. it moved moved a couple I literally moved like two towns over um but no there's a place that what uh, an old friend of mine's parents play uh, parents have owned for you know decades and uh they actually make really kick-ass bagels yes i do enjoy the cream the vegetable cream cheese they make but i've also had their bagels plain and their egg everything's are fucking phenomenal so i've had really good bagels in my life i'm not but i know the people bagels. you're i know i know the I'm, I'm just fucking around man. i know the people you're talking about and yeah that, like i said that's the attitude because honestly fuck the culture man this is uh, the city in general could be a really good place if most of the fucking people weren't there <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because there's some really cool shit that I'd love to hang out and like look at and like you know like you know it just there there are cool things there and in general it can be a cool place but most of the people largely suck. Yeah, 
and they were, and, and they always have this kind of attitude like you know they they stepped out of civilization for a little bit to hang out with us here in the fucking jungle we're a bunch of fucking uncivilized animals i'm like shut the fuck up okay you guys have <laughs> New York is disgustingly filthy. <laughs> like, don't don't sit here and pretend like you know, like you're out here in the filth. Like, oh no. come on, the sa- the savior Giuliani cleaned it all up. Don't you remember? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So I can oh, I, I almost completely forgot about this, but we were going to talk about Parkland. Oh yeah, that's and, right. And all the stuff that was going around this now. Like everybody's talking about this and they're talking about like taking away guns over this. I'm like, what's the point? It was a good movie. Like there's (laughs) the guy who, who, who killed Kennedy was using, wasn't even using an AR 15. Like why are we even talking about the AR 15? It wasn't even semi-automatic. It was bolt action. Well, you know, everybody, you know how they think, man, everything's an AR 15. So we might as well talk about how good this movie is because everybody's been bashing it lately. And I I don't know why. I think it's it's one of my favorite movies. It's like one of my favorite movies. It's probably not in my top 10 list, but it's one of my favorite movies, Parkland. And you didn't see it, but I guess it's on Amazon Prime right now. And I was like, oh, "Oh." I did see it. Yeah. I was like, you should go watch it. It's good. Oh, yes. And yes, and you were. Yeah, I, I'm. 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 I'm as flabbergasted as, as you as the, yeah. at, uh, at all the negative press. Because man, yeah, I, I really did think it was amazing. And it came out like, like what? I told you, f- like a couple years ago. Like, why are we just now mentioning it? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. So it was a while ago. I, I guess people are saying that it's like a conspiracy theory because like there's actors in it or something. And I'm like, of course there's actors oh, in it. It's a fucking oh, movie. Oh, the, the crisis actor stuff, man. People just. But. Um, <sighs> It's like, but why? They're not making any bones about it. They're, it's very clear. Like, you've never seen Tommy Lee Jones in a movie, and we're worried about like some side actors, like one of the bit part act or the the what are they called extras? Like, we're worried about like pointing out extras. Like, come on, give me a break. So, Parkland is is a movie that's about the JFK assassination, but it's no, oh. Didn't no, you turn that off? Yeah, I did, but the alarm is still <laughs> on because that was my. That's, that's usually my. Normally, I'd be waking up at about this time, <laughs> so I'm gonna turn it off. So the story is about like all the events surrounding the JFK assassination, but not about the JFK assassination. Which a lot of like you would think that that movie that's what it would be about would be like, oh, we're gonna hear, see what happened, you know, with Jackie and and John, you know, when they got up that morning and the flight and the conversations they had. That's what you expect from a movie about the JFK assassination. But it's not. It's really about like the FBI agents that were around that uh, when that when that was happening. Which I get. Well, at least the one thing that they were getting factually accurate it was yeah, like the FBI was getting tips about the shooter, and they did they didn't act on it. I think that's like the only thing people got accurate about all of this stuff about Parkland. Um, so, yeah, that that is true. Let me turn my alarms off real quick, so because it, it's going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got an alarm that's going to end up happening right afterwards. Okay. Um, and, and it's also about uh, Lee Harvey Oswald's brother and the stuff that he was having to deal with. Uh, and, and Lee Harvey Oswald's mother, which she was fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. That really, that, that was great. Um, and then also about the Secret Service agents and their interactions with Abraham Zapruder, the guy who shot uh, shot the footage of JFK being shot and all the stuff. And everybody gave like a stellar performance except for uh, except for the, the person I would expect the best performance from, which was Billy Bob Thornton. There was one particular scene that I was like, <laughs> that was cringe inducingly bad. <laughs> but everything else in the movie was fantastic. Everybody played their parts. There was, um, and uh, who was the guy that, what was his name? You mentioned his name, but you couldn't remember it. But I think you actually got it right. The guy Who? that was in Stranger oh, Things uh, played the sheriff. Dave, David Stranger Harbor. Things. Yeah, he he played one of the FBI. He agents. was he was yeah. He, I was like I said I, I was ex- especially impressed with like I, I have seen him in a couple of other things now, but like he was yeah he was really good. <laughs> yeah, and the guy from uh, was it Office Space. <laughs> oh, Ron, yeah, Ron Livingston. Ron Livingston. Right? He's in it. Yeah, he was he was really good too. Everybody was good. Yeah, everybody did. A- even 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 good old Zach Efron 
What, what did Zac you say about him? Yeah, I was like, Zac Efron, every time I've ever seen him in a movie, it's just uh, he's just a vehicle for him to take his shirt off. Like, that's pretty much all he does in every movie that I've ever seen him in. And it's like, oh, God. But no, the dude can act. Apparently, he yeah. can act. And he can keep apparently, his shirt on. Yeah. Well, apparently he can, because I actually mentioned that to, to Jen, that you had said that. And she's like, oh, no, he actually, he's he's turned into an actor, because apparently there's some other, you know, big name movie, I forget now already, um, that he did a couple of years ago that's supposed to be like, you know, he's supposed to be amazing in as well. So, he was uh, in yeah, the room. I, oh, no, he was in The Disaster Artist, which is a movie about the making of the room. He played Chris. Ah, uh, yes. He played, I still haven't seen that yet. <laughs> he played uh, the guy who was playing Chris R. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where's my fucking money? I don't have 10 fucking minutes. <laughs> You're not my fucking mother. <laughs> yeah, he, he played that. And, and surprisingly, he kept a shirt on in that one, too. Um, <laughs> yeah, apparently apparently he's good now. But yeah, yeah. he was he was great. Um, yeah. So, so I, I don't really know this movie. Yeah. And the guy who wrote the the book that this movie is based on. Well, it's not even based on it's 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 basically a movie adaptation of the book Parkland. Um, it was written by Vincent Bulioski. 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 G is silent. Oh. He is the guy that wrote. Um, he, well, he was the the prosecutor for um, f- for the 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 city of L. A. For uh, and he was the one that prosecuted Charles Manson. And that's how he got his, his big kind of public spotlight because he ended up writing a book about it later called Helter Skelter about the about the. Trial. Oh, OK. And he also was commissioned to um, be the the during like during, during a mock trial that was taking place in London where they actually got people from the jury rolls of Dallas, Texas and flew them out to to. To, to London, England, you know, paid full paid vacation, everything. And all of all of the surviving witnesses during the JFK assassination. And they had a mock trial to, uh, uh, and they put Lee Harvey Oswald on trial. And he mm-hmm. was he was the prosecutor. And of course, he prosecuted him and they found him guilty. Uh, and um, he wrote a book later on called um Revisiting history, I believe it's called. I'm, I'm trying to get a copy of this book, but it's expensive because it's like four thousand pages or something like that. It's it's a ta- like like the publisher was like, I we were concerned about putting it out because we didn't want to hear the story about like some little old lady who bought the book and was like literally crushed by the volume of the size of the book because it's so heavy. Um, and it goes through all of the conspiracy theories around the JFK assassination. Like this guy is well well knowledge about uh, knowledgeable about it. And he wrote this book later on and he was like, we kept talking about all the things that were like about JFK and everything in this book. He's like, but we should actually tell the story about all the other people that were involved. And they turned it into a movie. And I guess Tom Hanks production company made this movie. It's really good. Yeah. 10 out of 10. It's on Amazon Prime right now. As yes. of this recording. Hashtag yes. go watch. But I, I just hey, don't understand why. Like, I think that's probably what it was. They, it was on Amazon Prime, and people finally saw it for the first time because it wasn't a major release. This movie, I don't think. I don't think it was a. It wasn't released in all the theaters. Yeah, I'd never even heard of it before. Yeah. It was all, all of a sudden, it was just everywhere. I mean, the name was just everywhere, and like, and then you were the one who finally brought it to my attention. And I, was I was like, like oh, okay, and, yeah. and and that, and I really don't understand why everybody's so upset. Yeah. I mean, sure, there. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can understand. I, mean, I heard a lot of people talking about, you know, a lot of the blood. Yeah, you saw a lot of blood. I okay, you know, I mean, it wasn't like a horror film, you know. Like, I yeah. mean, come on. There, um, there was some blood when when they're talking about the doctors, uh, you know, who were taking care, trying to re- resuscitate JFK, which you could tell was just a fruit fruitless effort. Um, you know, I had honestly never looked that far into things. I didn't realize they even tried to do that. Yeah. <laughs> So there was only they didn't mention this in the movie, but there was actually another person that was shot, and that was Op- Officer Tippett. Uh, he was shot when JFK tried to flee, and the police officer tried to apprehend him because he was running and it was very suspicious, and he shot him. And they didn't mention that in the movie, I don't think, um, because it really wasn't about Lee Harvey Oswald. It was mostly about everything around, you know, everybody else around it, pretty much. So they didn't mention yeah. that. So there was basically only two people that died. And I keep hearing things about like something like 17 people were killed in this movie. And 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 I guess now YouTube is like 
shutting down like accounts of uh, they're taking down videos and shutting down accounts of people who keep trying to point out that this this was all like a, a staged film. I don't. What is going on with this world right now? Uh, yeah, our, like our this social time? justice warrior thing is going way too far. Like we we have to say it. Like this was a this was a staged film with hired actors. They admit to this. It's well. Yeah, say, aren't, 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 aren't aren't all of these things staged? I'm so confused. Yeah. Like, it, it, have the, has it really gotten that far that they're calling things as they are and getting mad about it? <laughs> I don't know. And I, and I guess a bunch of milf porn, like a milf porn site, is is like trying to get guns banned over this thing. Was it Moms Demand Action? Which I I really got to check that porn site out. I like I like milf porn, but I don't I don't know what the hell is happening, man. Like every, everything's just falling apart, and you know, and Trump. <laughs> Trump's threatening to take guns away. Only from certain people. Yeah, only from certain people. Without due process. Allegedly. I don't know. But, you know, everybody keeps saying, like, we got to have a discussion about Parkland. Like, I thought it was a great film. Why is everyone freaking out about it? I don't know, man. There's no accounting for taste, I guess. No, I guess not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, pe- people really hated the happening, and I thought it was a fantastic film, probably for all the bit, all the wrong reasons, but it was a fantastic <laughs> film. You know, the same reason why I liked The Room. It had nothing to do with Tom, what Tommy envisioned, envisioned I would like that movie. Um, I'm not even. I'm not even really sure what Tommy envisioned. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think Tommy knows what he envisioned. <laughs> So yeah, good film. Ten out of ten. I don't know. Yeah, maybe no. I'd say nine point five out of. I'm docking that point five percent out just because of that one scene. Really, really. And that I mean, scene okay. made me cringe. See, now, let for, me explain I, what it is first. So there's okay, a scene. But, uh, there's a scene where the cur- Secret Service agents are watching the Zapruder film for the first time. Like no one else has seen it. And um, Forrest. Well, he had a, a Bruder Forrest, already seen it. Yeah, Agent Forrest, who's played by um, Billy Bob. Billy Bob Thornton sees it and like he freaks out like at, at the kill shot when the kill shot happens. He's like, "Oh, oh my, my god. god!" And they're like, "Like you guys fucked this up." And he's like, "God damn it! Don't tell me that!" And it was it was so out of character and it was so poorly acted and it was so cringe inducing. Like I actually cringed when I saw it. But other than that. Everything else was great. Everybody else gave great performances. Billy Bob Thornton gave a a great performance too, just not in that scene. <laughs> so I'm docking uh, it see, I... one half of a point. Wow, yeah. that, that's a lot for that one scene. That was uh, see, I don't know. Nine point five out of. <laughs> that's a... I'm, yeah, I know, but a full half point for that one scene. I yeah, it was, it was uh, that. Bad. I didn't think. I see. I I don't know. I, I didn't literally have literally triggered. I thought. I thought. I thought. I, well, see. I thought. I told you. I thought that one was cringy, but for different reasons. It was just because what he said. Because yeah. <laughs> it was so like the attitude of you know what we understand the <laughs> the the police and the FBI to be today. Like it was yeah. just that attitude. <laughs> Um, and, uh, so that, you know, I don't know yeah, that, was, that, 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 that I, I understand. I mentioned one scene to you where I was like, what do you, what do you mean? Like when, like the, kind of like when this scene happened and that was when Forrest uh, first approaches a pruder and he was like, did you get a feel oh. of the whole thing? He's like, yep. where were you standing right here? He's like, sir, can, can I ask you for a copy of that t- uh, tape? And he was like, uh, he was like. I'm afraid I'm not asking anymore. Yeah, and that sir, was, sir, yeah. I'm no long, <laughs> sir, sir, I'm no longer yeah, asking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that part, yeah. that part was kind of like, goddamn fucking cops. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to go back and watch it again because I think I think I was so I was so in that oh, goddamn fucking cops attitude again <laughs> when during that other scene that I didn't I didn't pay I I I thought it was a little cringy but not I didn't take it as badly as you did apparently. Yeah. No, that that scene was especially cringe. Like I cringed. I was like, that was a really bad. And I love Billy Bob Thornton. In fact, he's in my favorite Christmas. Movie. No, not even my favorite. It's objectively the best Christmas movie of all time. It's Still right. Up, seen that. It's right up there with the ref. And I I, I really don't know why you, <laughs> that you would like the ref, but you would never get around to seeing bad santa i love well okay first of all i love the rest yeah <laughs> it's, it's actually one of it, it's not even just my, it's not even my favorite christmas movie it's, it's one of my favorite movies okay. of all time because i was always a huge you know 
I found Dennis Leary at a very at a very um, challenging point in my life, <laughs> and and being able to listen to him it really helped me. <laughs> He's a Bostonian, so, though, isn't he? Yeah, so yeah, he is. Okay, it's it's kind of hard uh, for me to pick them out from from, from New York. Apparently. It's, well, because he also spent so much time in New York uh, okay. in his in his life too that he kind of like crossed over. Like, uh, what was it? What was that one show he did? Uh, it was an FX show about the fire department. Or no, what they were supposed to be Bostonites in that one, or were they supposed to be New Yorkers? I forgot. Whatever it was, whatever there was a show he did where he, he fits in either way. But yeah, but yeah, the ref's awesome. <laughs> yeah, the ref's awesome. Um, Bad Sand is like everything that the ref is. Even better, I think, in my opinion. <laughs> See, and I don't know why. I really don't know why I have still haven't seen it because I actually am a huge Billy Bob fan too. Yeah. But I did see like, uh, oh my god, <laughs> Arthur Christmas is, is slowly creeping up that list. Man, it's 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 second, but I'm not sure if I'm I'm ready to say Wait, that it's better than this? Bad Santa. Arthur Christmas. Holy shit! What is what is that? I have no idea what that it's is. It's an it's an animated movie. It, it has everything. The reason why you haven't heard of it is because it has everything, like on its like er, on its surface level that you would expect. We're, we're, we're talking about Christmas movies in fucking March. I have no idea. Anyways, <laughs> but <laughs> this is Billy Bob. Fucking Billy Bob. Um, so yeah, Arthur Christmas. It's it has everything going wrong for it. Like it's a Sony animation movie. Strike one. Uh, <laughs> it's a Christmas movie. Strike two, and so you're probably those. You know, just those two strikes alone kind of makes people not really know about it too much. But the people who do know about it, like, will constantly cite it being like the best Christmas movie, and it's about like this, the like the son of Santa, because Santa's like it's never been one person. It's it's been like a generational thing. So uh -huh. the original Santa, like, 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 a, you know, the previous generation Santa's in this, you know, he's like the retired grandpa. And then they have like the heir to the throne, which is like the new, the new Chris Kringle that's coming up. And then there's the current Santa and then he's about ready to pass it on to his other son. And then there's another brother who's like, he's a, he's a klutz and that's why he's not being considered to be the next Santa. Um, mm -hmm. Who's upset that one person didn't get a present this year. And so they're going back and trying to get it. And it's it's those the whole it's kind of the whole story, but man, I'll tell you right now, like I I cried like a bitch at the end of that movie. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's mm. it, it's it's it fucking gets you, man. I'm telling you, fucking same thing with Up. Like I don't really cry <laughs> during movies, especially with normal actors, but for some reason, I I watched the first like sequence about with Up, and I was like, no, this is emotional oh. <laughs> goddamn terrorism. I will not stand for this. <laughs> How uh, how yeah. could how could th like a three D move like a three D like character thing make me feel this bad? I'm over it. I'm <laughs> out. I'm out. Oh, but it gets so much better. <laughs> no, that was emotional goddamn terrorism. I won't have anything. I I will not negotiate with terrorists. Not not even. Not Wait a minute, even. You didn't fin you've never fin are you saying you didn't finish it? No. I'm and I refuse You've never to. Oh, and I refuse oh, to watch it. I I got the, I'm sorry. Right right when she died, right when the when the grandma died with and they didn't go on their adventure, I was too sad. I I know how it pays off. I know how it pays off and it's even that, that sounds even more sad. Nope, not doing it. Nope. I, uh, it's not a Kokesh. I'm not going to stand for terrorists and watch it later. <laughs> I'm just not doing it. <laughs> not doing it. Uh, yeah. Sorry. You will never know the wonder that is Doug. Nope. I, I, I've, I've seen clips. I'm good. <laughs> I'm all right. I'm all right. Yeah. But Arthur Christmas, man, that'll get you. I guarantee you. I will guarantee you. You will be crying like a bitch because I know other people who are the same way, like, oh, crying in movies or whatever. But fucking Arthur Christmas. No, man, I, I, get, I, get, I, get, I get caught. <laughs> I get I, I get caught. I get caught off guard every once in a while with certain stuff. And there are there are certain ones that I, I that I'm sure if I watched again, the same thing would happen. Yep. Um, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not judging, man. I never up 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 almost actually I think up almost got me the first time I watched it. I managed to hold it together and I I stayed through it and I'm glad I did. No, no, that, I'm telling it's you, actually Arthur one Christmas of my, I'm sorry, it's actually worse. one of my it's actually it's actually <laughs> one of my favorite movies. Yeah, Arthur Christmas got you way worse, but it, it was it's at the, the very end. It's like the 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 final like climax of the story, so to speak. Like oh. that's what gets you. You're like, ah oh, fuck. 
crying like a bitch, and then I had to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But that was an emotional terrorism. That, like, the, the, for that to happen at the very beginning of the movie, like, come on, man, you can't do that. That's not cool. Oh, come on. It's like it's like killing Drew Barrymore off in the first five minutes of Scream, you know, for all the Drew Barrymore fans out there. Like me, who are so excited when we found out she's going to be in it. And <laughs> crushed me. And she was, I actually walked out of Scream the first time because oh. I was so pissed off they killed her. It's the whole reason I went to see that goddamn movie. In I, the didn't, I didn't. When I was younger, like I didn't really care about Drew Barrymore, uh, but Carmen Electra. I loved. Uh, okay, I Carmen Electra too, but I just they, for they, some reason she was killed off in the second one, right? Or was that like scary movie or something? I think that was scary movie. Okay, I'm getting uh, them all fucked up. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, see, I I grew up. Drew and I. Drew. <laughs> Drew and I. Drew and I are the same age, so I literally grew up with her in all of her movies, like watching all of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> so like it was always a thing for me, like back to like what ET, right? Yeah. She was too- no, I think I think about that time when she was getting really popular and everybody was like she was like a big sex idol thing. Like my thing was it wasn't Carmen Electra. It was. um, Oh, who was that? Uh, 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 Cameron Diaz. It was when when the mask came out. Uh, and then she never looked that good again. Like she's she looks good, no. but she never looked that good again. <laughs> like, <laughs> she, like she was like smoking in that movie. And then the, the other movie, she was just hot. But I remember in that movie, yeah. I was like, um, like I actually did the thing that that J- Jim Carrey did in that movie, where he turned into a wolf and was whistling, and then his jaw dropped and tongue rolled out. Like I did all that stuff in that movie. It, it actually happens. Like that was that actually was not a CG CGI sequence. <laughs> the, like that the, was the wolf. Yeah, oh, oh. yeah. someone seeing uh, Cameron Diaz in that movie for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's I who I was more interested in, but yeah. Well, like I said, I've been following her for a while, so and I don't. I don't by, that, by that, I don't mean like stalking her. I was gonna say like mm, maybe we should call the police. Like I usually oppose calling the police. <laughs> Wait, does Carmen Electra work at that bank or, or not? Carmen like damn, damn that. <laughs> Drew Barrymore. Does she work at that bank? Is that why you're threatening all? No, them? no. It's like you stay away from no, that no. woman. Yeah. All right. So do you want to wrap this up then? Yeah, sure. Okay. So go see <laughs> Parkland. It's really not that bad. Calm your tits. Yeah. Stop trying to take my guns because you don't like the stupid movie. Goddamn liberals. And uh, d- definitely don't make sawed off fucking weapons on camera and then distribute it on the internet. That's a great way to go to jail. Um, <laughs> yeah. People yeah. Not very bright. Yeah. I think that's but also it. proud of themselves. Yeah, yeah. And, and, don't, and don't be a furry. <laughs> so, <laughs> go ahead and plug your uh, your your podcast. Oh, because it because it really was good. That episode really. Oh yeah, finally I did a good one. You yeah, know, it happens every once no, in a while. No, <laughs> your the Atlas abstraction thing. That's, I'm, I'm actually that, enjoying it far more than seeds. I, I've 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 gotten that a lot. I <laughs> I can see that. Um, no, I I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that. Well, my latest podcast that Jim's talking about is uh, the Abolitionist Abstractions, which I still don't have a so I still don't have a separate feed for. So it's still at solpodcast.org with all the rest of my crap. Um, even some of my writing starting to go up there now that I now that I finally have access to my own website. <laughs> Paul was Paul finally gave me the password. <laughs> He's like, here, you can post stuff if you want. I'm like, oh, that's that's probably a good thing that I know how to do that on my own website. <laughs> um, so yep. yeah, yeah, pretty much everything. Tr- what was the now. one that you did on Trump? I'm gonna I'm gonna link it in the description. But oh, it's the very last one, episode 24. Um, I think what did I title it? Uh, a deep thinker, a deep thinker. The mango, the mango Mussolini is not. Um, <laughs> mango Mussolini. <laughs> that's still like my my. I said my two favorite. Uh, there's a bunch. So many people have different nicknames for him, but the the mango Mussolini was one of the first ones I heard when he first when it first became apparent that he was definitely going to be the president. <laughs> and uh, I, I really enjoyed that one. And then so, then the uh, the great Cheeto, Cheetolini, I think, is funny too. <laughs> I just I love getting to use that one because it, it it makes it makes the Trump lover so mad. <laughs> what about Circus Pinoche? I haven't heard that one, but that's pretty good. I too. just made that one up. It's kind of long. I, 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 well, Circus Peanuts are orange. Right? No, 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 no. I, I wasn't saying it was <laughs> okay. wrong. No, I was saying it was long, not wrong. It was, it was a little long. 
I don't think it's oh, as funny like it. as, as, as the as the Mango Mussolini one, but I have never yeah. heard that before. Oh, you never did? Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what I picked that up early on. I don't remember who said it first. So I because I, 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 I do get like to give credit for stuff like that. I definitely didn't make this one up. Uh, I wish I could but take credit. But yeah, th that's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Thanks for coming on, man. Great talking to you again. Yeah, man. You too. Yeah, hail Satan. And watch where you're going, goddammit. <laughs>